hi everyone and welcome back welcome to another video of this how to become a ninja developer so in the last video we talked about uh, some of the guidelines now we are going to implement those guidelines in this video so let's say we have one is a monorepo and one is a standalone app so how we can baseline the application for either front end or a back end let's see an example of back end application you are just simply writing an API baseline right you are building an APIs and you wanted to baseline so that you can have a rock foundation for your repository for your initial commits and then you can build on top of that so if you adopt a ninja developer strategy then you will take care of all different configurations either test configuration CI configuration uh, basic you will use a proper module structure you will just say okay this is a feature module this is a shared module you will do a proper setup of unit testing and end-to-end -end testing and running them through the npm scripts you will build a proper test environment and you will also set up a local development uh, of containerizing your application through the docker file and docker compose you will have a proper es lint setup and pretty rc you will have a proper setup of uh, how you format the commit messages using commit CLI okay commit gen and commit CLI just configurations for the end-to-end -end tests and compiler configurations like TS config um, by understanding each and everything whatever you are writing inside a TS config and the husky configurations which enables the git hooks so that whenever you add a commit it will run your prettier or it will your run your ESLint and all so these things will make uh, your uh, application the standalone app which you are building uh, are really a rock strong right so on on top of that then you can further build whatever you want but this is a minimal setup which you should always have to get any kind of api development now if you talk about the front end what you do is you will use create react app or create next app and all these things which uh, those cli applications already have the the proper setup of lots of things they already have the eslint uh, already enabled through those auto generated cli applications but when it comes to the back end of what you do either you use a express app which is unopinionated you can build in your own way right you just define your own folder structures and all and when you use nest.js it enforces you some guidelines and you can just use these nest.js building blocks to build the apis so we will just take an example of simple nest.js application i uh, posted this blog uh, earlier which talks about okay what all different things which you should consider before baselining uh, a simple application i mean whenever you initialize an application or a repository for your development work always remember all those things okay how you are going to structure your test how you are going to run your ci because you need a for github you need to write a github actions for gitlab you need to write a gitlab ci.yml and for docker you may need docker containerized uh, configurations test configurations uh, linting configurations eslint uh, tslint and and then in your package json script you need to put all those things like okay npm run lint npm run lint fix npm run prettier all those conf npm scripts needs to be there so let's say we are going to set up a very basic application okay so let's do nest new and it will ask you our application which is we will call it as a ninja apis and we are using for now npm package installation failed uh, we will do it inside this folder okay so this is like our basic uh, nest.js setup is there right now it, it doesn't give you lots of things it gives you a basic stuff okay there is a format prettier is there so if you look into the uh, configurations just is already there and i think uh, we don't have just config source map prettier is already installed so a lot of dev, dev dependencies what whatever we need is kind of already there so these are all the typings eslint prettier so all these are eslint configurations you can see 
all the required plugins and all and here is a gist for writing our tests prettier and i think there is a prettier rc file also there very with very basic configuration and eslint.js because we already have eslint plugins and i'm using this cli which is generating me this code right so obviously it needs to have all the things enabled right it should be able to do the linting it should be able to run the test it should be able to run the end-to-end -end test and all these tests so we already have some test in these components you can see the spec files we should be able to run the test using npm run test okay uh, let's get this finished and then we will just initialize this application and we will see what else we can add on top of that okay so commit conventions we can add we can segregate the different environments dev and test environments and we can also introduce the docker files first let's see what do i have in this blog okay so what i'm doing is i'm just saying okay you need to introduce all lot of configurations in your code so we need to first of all introduce so what i'm doing is i'm introducing commit lint right commit lint is enabled with the git hooks okay using husky we are going to install so commit link checks your commit messages and it will enforce you to follow some standards uh, when you are doing a git commit so it we are already on the develop branch right so you can see git log nothing is there it's an empty so we are going to add these as a dev dependencies commit cli commit gen okay go to the package json go to your dev dependencies and add and couple of things are already there like just configuration is already here what i will do is i will move the just configuration from the package json and i will create a simple just configuration outside later typescript is a global version 4.7.4 we are using so i introduced some commit lint configurations which i think i should put somewhere on the top okay so these are the commit lint configurations and then i need to add a config in my package json to enable this thing and also i need to add one more file okay why it is complaining okay and then i need to write this commit lint config dot js so new file commit lint config dot js and it will have just a commit lint config conventions okay so with this help you can actually run a script like npm run uh, uh, lint uh, the, what, what this will do is this is going to pair up with the husky so let's see what is husky husky npm i'm doing a typos here okay husky husky is a mod modern native git hooks okay which is making easy to integrate it with all these things so let's say what we are doing here is when you do the commit right what it will do is it will check for these hooks which are available in the husky folder pre-commit hooks right so before even you do the commit you wanted to run the lint for whole code you wanted to run a prettier for whole code before you add a commit so if there is any prettier error or a lint errors it will stop the commit process right you can override it by just passing a no no verify or ignore but it's better to have all these things so what we will do is we will introduce husky in our code base so inside husky we are going to create this commit lint so what we will do is first of all install husky this is a dev dependency we are adding and then inside a package.json i will add a prepare script husky install inside your package.json add a script and i will do npm run prepare so it will just install this husky husky.sh right now next thing we need to do is adding these hooks commit message so inside husky i will create a file commit message 
okay and then i need to add this pre commit another hook so inside has key pre commit and there is a one more which is pre commit message prepare commit message sorry because these things you are not getting with the cli these things you are configuring based on your need so let's say if i wanted to run a lint command npm run or i wanted to add a git commit command we already have this prepare ready so git status we have added some commands right npm run ptr so we have these commands okay now we need, we need to add it i will just try to check if this hook is working okay git add let me add something okay hook was ignored because it is not set as executable that is correct bin sh okay so we need to make these executable maybe dot sh extension let me just check i think dot sh is not the right way i will just okay and then try okay let me just see what i did there so what we are doing is we are just adding these git hooks right we are just adding these three pre commit hooks and uh, we will just set up a script using uh, husky install so what it will do is it will just create this husky file which is husky.sh right and then husky.sh let's see what it contains we just need only this thing okay which are okay this husky didn't really execute let's see this so uh, this this is husky with these three pre commit hooks then we will talk about the docker right why you need a docker setup because you uh, you will need a postgres mongodb mysql and all these things to run your application so we don't need to name it to do dot sh what i need to do is i need to make these file executable uh, i forgot that you can just simply do it so what it will do is it will make these files executable by changing the permission to 777 and then uh, you do git commit minus m so now it is happening right it is enabling this it has enabled this eslint right and it is executing uh, currently we don't have a script prettier script in our package.json which we need to add then it will start executing it right so our setup is correct i was not uh, because these were ignored because these were not set as executable now commit link config git hooks we have installed the docker setup docker setup is actually optional if you are having uh, if you are building an application which needs uh, multiple containers like rabbitmq kafka or maybe a simple node.js container or a database container then you need to have a uh, this docker setup otherwise you can you can skip this and now setting up the eslint and the prettier we already have i think uh, all these plugins installed you can have a simple eslint rc i mean currently this is very extensive one if you look into this we already have our simple eslint rcjs file right with the few rules uh, which has been turned off so you can have you can have eslint rc and prettier rc and then inside your package json you need to add all these scripts to enable the the prettier and the eslint setup so i will do it uh, somewhere here 
and we already have a lint format okay and then i can just try to play with this es lint and then what it is doing it is applying the es lint and then it is running a prettier and if everything goes right it will use this uh, commit lint and it will uh, give you all these options okay this is a feature or this is a fix if it is a document change if it is a refactor and you can put a perfect message right right now it's like uh, you are actually baselining the whole project right baseline app with cli generator code baseline app code so what you will do is okay there is something error can't find module config conventional when it is applying it okay commit lint i already have this dependency added commit lint cli config conventional cli and commit gen okay okay so the issue was i switched the node.js version and then uh, on this node version these globally were not installed commit cli and commit lint config conventional i installed them and then i just did a simple commit and it start it happened as expected right so you can see we are just following the the basic commit conventions this is what this commit uh, lint cli is doing for us okay after that uh, we need to uh, enable the configurations for the test okay so ts config is already in good shape because uh, here we have a ts config ts config build this is good we, because we can also have a ts config for test ts config test.json but that's not really required this is ts config now the next part is a test related configurations the one of first uh, is a jest right what we need to have a jest config and this is how it looks like so here uh, set a file a module extensions what we are looking for and what we can do is we can create a separate jest file jest config.ts and in most of the projects what do we have is we always have dot env file and then env.example so that we would know what all environment variables we need and then env.test this is actually a nomen file for running the test cases okay and then you need a jest config so what is jest jest is actually a test runner which is used across all these projects so jest is really powerful uh, library which we used for with react and then there is a jest testing libraries and all what we are doing here is if you look into simple documentation this is the repository how we are using jest so you just install the jest as a dev dependencies and then you can create a jest config in your project right so you can just use it with all different module bundlers okay i mean lot lot lots of things is there so what we will do is just config.ts I think it's JS. Uh, okay, and what it is saying is, the, I'm looking for the test folder. So we already have a test folder generated. The setup files is inside test. We have setup env bars dot js. So this is JS file we need, which will bootstrap the environment for the test test files. So how what we are doing is we are using dot env and we are loading this particular env.test file okay because for development the environment variables may be different for the test the environment variables may be different so we are loading dot env.test for it and then we are running the execution of the tests against these environment variables and then all the tests you can actually create e2e folder here and then you can create your modules 
okay for user module all the e2e tests are here for the profile module all the e2e tests are here so all the e2e tests will go here and all the the unit tests are already part of the code here we are creating dot spec dot ts so you can see this just e2e file is looking for dot e2e spec files and this just unit tests is looking for spec dot ts or test dot ts files okay so that is the difference and we can also create a module mapper what module mapper is in either react app or any kind of typescript app you might be importing things from multiple folders right there is a the deep path you are importing you are, you might be saying something like this import this module from i know i have done this from this particular path so instead of that you can use this module mapper and you can specify that when you are using at the read app that means you are looking for inside source app folder when if you are looking for at the read auth then you are looking inside source app auth it's a module alias which you need to have in your project okay so what else we can add in our project is these all these things so the all these things are enabled can also be enabled in your uh, monorepo projects so let's say this is these are the monorepo we were using right and all these things okay uh, inside packages and you can see we already have all these things commit lint conventions commit gen husky prettier all these configurations are already enabled so when you do is npm run prettier right all these things gets executed so here npm run prettier right right it is just running the prettier against all these files and if you look into package json so here we can get lint and lint fix npm run lint also you can run because in most of the projects these these become part of your ci pipelines which checking the lint check running the prettier in most of the projects either you have a prettier or either you have a es lint or both because prettier the objective of prettier is different and the objective of using es lint is different okay prettier is just running these basic two rules okay single quotes and trailing comma es lint is just checking all these rules has been properly applied to this type script code or not okay now what you can do is you already have this you can just do npm run start to start the application this is simple nest js application unexpected code i always expect something will go wrong so what happened i am not sure what uh, global node modules mismatch test okay maybe i need to clean up this i didn't switch the node version it's uh, we are using 14.5.0 so for fixing this maybe i'll just remove this package lock also and then to the fresh installation npm install and then i will just do npm run start so i need to clean up uh, my node module so i did the npm install again and i can just do npm run start to start my application and then you can also run your test cases we already have just config available you can see our just config so i can just run the tests npm run test and we also have an end to end tests so tests e to e you can execute this command test e to e end to end tests are for your local setup i mean you can just test your apis are returning the right status code and all that is for end to end tests and for you might be doing mocking in your controller and services to test them so we have simple test setup i mean we have required all these things so i will just do some more commits so we'll just baseline the whole app get commit minus m and it will run the prettier again that is what we need and we need to ignore this test file so what i will do is in the prettier ignore file which is not there Okay, it should be 
here ignore it should be dist and is it prettier ignore like same as the git ignore it should be something like this So if you are adding something inside a prettier ignore then okay maybe it's not the right one let me just check uh the prettier ignore right do we have prettier ignore here So this is our prettier ignore and most of the time the mistake I'm doing is I'm adding these files outside this particular folder. Like earlier also the commit lint config and this env files were outside and that's why it was not able to identify in the even the prettier ignore. Now prettier ignore is working. Similarly you can also add an ignore file like eslint ignore. So this is a prettier ignore and it is ignoring all the files which we don't need like the build, coverage, dist, uh, not modules, whatever the folder. We don't want to run the prettier there. And then we can just fix these files. So I will just do npm run prettier right. And then git status, git add again and running the prettier and running the commit okay so it is running the hooks again and then we can just say is baseline api app it's a feature and we added the logs okay so this is like a simple setup of a service which contains the tests uh, the remaining part here is the docker configurations docker if you need it you can set up it in my most of all the repositories we do have a docker docker compose docker file and docker compose override and uh, if you are having some ci like gitlab and github then you will be adding all these things let's say i will be adding github here new folder so it should be dot github it would be and inside that I think we have actions.yml I mean whatever it, these are like the actions you define and if you are using GitLab then what you do is you create a GitLab CI.yml and then you just define the steps that is the next thing like how you can set up a CI configurations CI CD uh, what all different steps needs to be performed when you are building the code mostly what you do is you do the npm install, npm run build, npm run test, lint and then npm run migrations if you have the migrations against a test database and do the npm run end to end test and then everything is ready. Now you can just deploy your application. Now same configurations we have in this uh, microservice app if you see we have this lint configurations. Uh, we have a commit lint commit gen and you can see husky is also there so whenever you are adding a commit we are enforcing the commit messages we have the prettier all these configurations so whatever the common configurations you see we have extracted out outside the all the services inside this monorepo and we can automate all those things through this nx okay so what we will see in the next video, uh, let's talk about this monorepo and then we will also talk about the GitHub branching strategy and all to make you a ninja developer.